Hello, and welcome to Encompass Live. I'm Sally Snyder from the Library Commission here, and I'll be hosting and presenting today. So here's hoping everything goes right. Um, we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about books that you might want to purchase for the coming summer reading program, which for children is Get Ready, Get Set, Read. Um, the team uh, theme is different. We'll encounter that as we go through the slides. And you can get a copy of my handout on our web page if you go to our web page and search the word handouts um, you can get a copy so you, you can jot down just quick notes if you want to today but get the whole handout um, put it up along with the recording of this presentation from today so you can look for that too if you want to in the meantime we'll get going so get ready get set read and we'll start, of course, as always, with fiction picture books. Sam and Dave Dig a Hole by Mac Barnett. Sam and Dave begin digging straight down, just missing what the reader can see is a large gem to the side. After a while, they decide to dig sideways, just missing a bigger gem straight underneath them. They decide to split up and continue to dig in different directions, and each time they change directions, they miss a larger and larger gem. Finally, they are too tired to dig anymore, and they just sit down. The dog, however, digs just a bit deeper to find a bone. Then the hole opens up, and they all three fall through the air until they end up back where they started. Or is it back where they started? Because there is no hole now, and there are slight differences in the tree that's there, in the house that you can't see here in the cover. There's no answers given. You just have to puzzle it out yourself. Stanley the Farmer by William B. Stanley keeps very busy and active on his farm. He plows the fields, spreads manure, plants and waters seeds with his friend Seamus, and with his red tractor. Simple art conveys the action. A quick look at the basic oh sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> A quick look at the basics of farming. My three best friends and me, Zule by Carrie Best. Zule is blind, and Miss Turner is teaching her how to use a white cane for walking around the school and other places. When their classroom teacher, Miss Seeger, tells them field day with contests and races will be in three weeks, Zule is certain she wants to run a race in her new pink shoes. Miss Turner says, you go, girl, and is sure they can find a way for it to happen. Readers will wonder how they can do it and will love the solution. Supportive friends and supportive teachers working together. Bear Can Dance by Suzanne Bloom. In this seventh book about Goose and Bear, we find that Bear wishes he could fly to swoop and glide and feel the wind in his fur. Goose knows he can't, but Fox thinks she can teach him. They try several things, but nothing works. Then they see Bear swooping and gliding. He is dancing, and that's good enough. Henry Holton Takes the Ice by Sandra Bradley. Henry's family, from grandma and grandpa down to his older sister, Sally, live and breathe hockey. Henry skates as soon as he can toddle, but every time they put a hockey stick in his hand, he can't do anything right. He finally discovers he was born to figure skate. After all, some, after some resistance, all his red-haired family supports him. It's a great family story and also about finding your place and accepting people for who they are. It's a good story time choice as well. The Bear Sea Escape by Benjamin Show. It's too cold in the snow on top of the opera house, so Papa Bear and Little Bear walk over the rooftops to a store window and fall asleep among the toy bear display. Little Bear is purchased by a family and heads off across town to a train and then a ship with Papa following as fast as he can. Little Bear can be found in every two-page spread, but Papa never seems to catch up to him until the end of the book. Lots of fun with different ways to travel and looking at Little Bear on every page. Maisie Learns to Swim by Lucy Cousin. This is part of the Maisie's First Experiences series. Maisie and her friends Tallulah and Eddie go to the pool for their first swimming lesson. It introduces swimming, blowing bubbles in the water, and floating. Good basic information for young beginners, and the characters have a lot of fun. And speaking of fun, in a, another book in this series, Maisie Plays Soccer, this book shows good sportsmanship and lots of enthusiasm and, and the basics of playing soccer. 
Maisie and her friends kick and pass the ball with each team scoring one goal. As it says at the end of the book, it doesn't matter who wins, it's just a lot of fun. Charlie Plays Ball by Reed Dremond. This is the fourth or fifth picture book, and there are three I Can Read books about Charlie the Ranch Dog. In this one, he talks about how everyone keeps quite busy, but sometimes they love to play ball. And he mentions three types, football, soccer, and basketball. Of course, Charlie plays a while, but soon his stomach grumbles, and he gets his very favorite type of ball, meatballs. A recipe for spaghetti and meatballs, along with cautions and warnings about cooking, is included at the back of the book. Tommy Can't Stop by Tim Federley. I love this one. Tommy is in constant motion. His parents and his older sister take turns trying to wear him out to no avail. They can't slow him down. His sister, who was taking ballet, recommends a tap class for him. He says, no way, because he's thinking ballet. That's not for me, not that kind of stuff. But he soon finds that tap class is the place where he can hop, kick, leap, stomp, and it's all called dancing. Clever and fun. And we all know kids who just keep on running more than we ever could. Flora and the Penguin by Molly Idol. This is a follow-up to Flora and the Flamingo. Flora is ice skating when a penguin emerges from a hole in the ice and they begin to skate together. The page is divided with two-thirds of the illustration on the ice and above and the other third below the ice. Keep an eye on the school of fish under the ice because they will cause a bit of a commotion. Occasionally, the book incorporates smaller flip sections over the illustration showing movement or additional action. Listeners will enjoy the flip se section and the disagreement Flora and the penguin have when the penguin dives through the hole in the ice to try to catch a fish. Be at Ballet by Rachel Isadora. It introduces ballet to toddlers with spare text and a straightforward approach. It covers clothing, the five basic positions, four foot movements, and a few basic whole body, body movements and fun. And along with this is another title, Jake at Gymnastics. It is clear Jake and his diverse gymnastics class are young beginners exploring the first moves for the sport and enjoying everything their teacher Dave suggests they do. Bright colored clothing attract the eye while the children are depicted in black and white lines with white backgrounds, like here. Shows their obvious joy with each activity. Little Kunoichi, her parents, her baby brother, and pet rabbit live on a secret island. She goes to a secret ninja girls' school and practices every day. When she meets Chibi Samurai, Chibi means small or short, they shugyo together, which means train like crazy, but to get better, not perfect, and have some fun too. They also work together and plan a demonstration for the festival. Soft yet colorful illustrations add to the story, and children will pour over them to see everything that is there and what the pet rabbit is doing. He's on most pages, and he's always kind of hidden. Soccer Star by Mina Haverbing, predicting his and his teammates' future success as soccer stars, Paulo Marcel Feliciano walks the reader through his day living in Brazil, walking his sister to school, working on a fishing boat, and playing a soccer game on the beach with his friends in the evening. Betty Benny wants a goal. Betty predicts making 10 goals for her first soccer game, and when she makes zero, she decides to quit. Her siblings talk her into trying again, and ultimately her older brother helps her practice after making a smart remark. Funny and true for her preschool age group, on the last page, Betty shows that she has learned her lesson too well. This is the fourth book about her, but it's the first one I've seen, so um, you might already have some books about Betty Betty in your collection. The Farmer's Away, bah, nay. The only words in this book are the animal sounds as they do a wild variety of activities while the farmer tills the field. It starts with floating on the stream and builds to a roller coaster and an evening soiree. They have to scramble to get back to the barnyard before the farmer sees them. It's silly fun with lots of action. Edmund unravels. Edmund is a ball of yarn and he has always enjoyed exploring. Eventually he goes off to see the world and have adventures but he does finally return home to visit his family and friends. Kids will love the illustrations of Edmund unwinding through cities in the country, even beaches. Sometimes it was a little scary, like when he was chased by kittens. There's a clever opening to this book. The end of a ball of yarn is the beginning. 
the baseball player and the walrus. The baseball player is successful, enjoying the game and earning good money, but something is missing. When he visits the zoo, he sees the walrus and just has to buy him and bring him home. He builds a good enclosure and they spend time together until the baseball player and his team go on the road. Too lonely for his friend, he quits. But now he cannot afford to keep the walrus and so the walrus goes back to the zoo. It's a good thing the zoo needs a walrus caretaker. Silly but fun and about finding the right job and a friend. Oh, you have to get this one. This is by Kate and Jim McMullen. They've had several books um, published previously. In this one, I'm Cool, the Zamboni machine shows how it's done. Brief text and large colorful pictures. It includes some diagrams that show what happens inside the machine, how it scrapes the ice and, and whirls it up and then spreads it smooth again. And it also shows the pattern that they use to drive around the ice to clear it. There's some good STEM information here as far as that goes. Let's dance, Grandma. Lucy loves to dance, but whenever her grandma visits mom, oh, visits, mom tells her, grandmas don't dance. But finally, one day, after numerous tiring activities, grandma and Lucy cuddle, and soon they are dancing together. And for adults, it's pretty obvious that dancing is a lot easier than some of the other things they were doing. Walk on the Wild Side by Nicholas Oldman. Oldland. This is the fourth book about these creatures. Friends Bear, Moose, and Beaver decide to climb the nearby mountain. They're just going to explore. But it soon turns into a race. Moose encounters some trouble. Bear tries to help. But it's Beaver, who was in the lead, that rescues his friends. They decide to slow down and enjoy the climb and the view at the top. And they see some wonderful things. And it's about companionship rather than competition. On the Ball by Brian Pinkney has kind of a different art style by him in this book, but it's very effective. Spare text tells of Owen who loved playing ball soccer, but sometimes things didn't go well. One day the ball escaped and Owen went running after it. They went across a stream into a jungle where Owen's uniform turns him into looking like a tiger. Flying off a cliff where he grabbed the ball in his talons and flew it back to the gate. Fanciful free-flowing art contribute to this daydream, I think. Joy in Mudbill by Bob Roshka. This one is, is fun. It's told in rhyme with a similar cadence that is a follow-up to Casey at the Bat. It is the next day, another game, and there can be Joy in Mudville. Casey has a home run in the eighth inning, but it is up to the relief pitcher, Joy, to win the game. Kids will love her pitcher, her pitching. The first is like a hike in football, the second lobbed like tennis, and so on through different sports for the win. Jack Rabbit McCabe and the Electric Telegraph. Told in tall tale style, Jack Rabbit McCabe was born to run. His legs were so long his dad had to extend his baby carriage. Soon he was running much faster than anyone. At age 18, the townspeople would hire him to fetch the doctor or round up kids when a twister threatened. Then one day the telegraph came to town. In a John Henry like fashion, Jack Rabbit challenged the telegraph and lost. Then the mayor invited him to learn Morse code and run the telegraph. It includes an author note about the invention and the use of the telegraph and a Morse code key at the back. Tallulah's Tap Shoes by Marilyn Singer. This is the fourth book about Tallulah and her love of ballet class and the first one I've read. Tallulah and her younger brother Beckett go to dance camp. camp. Tallulah is very good in ballet but a rank beginner in tap and she doesn't like it. She is surprised when one girl in ballet, Casey, says she hates ballet and loves tap. When Tallulah tells her, teachers always correct everybody, the realization that her statement also applies to her own experiences in tap class is a pivotal moment and well done. Enzo races in the rain. Enzo spends his time chasing cars that pass their farm because racing is his favorite thing to do. But then he meets a girl, Zoe, goes home with her and her father, and everything is wonderful though he does cause some trouble when he gets out of his new backyard and races cars on the street. When the wind blows. This family gets quite active when the wind begins to blow. They fly a kite, walk through town, and then hurry home when it starts to thunder and rain. Brief four-line rhymes. Two words on each line highlight the action. Skies darken. Thunder booms. Rain falls. 
We zoom. Kids will love looking for all that's going on in each illustration. Dino Swimming by Lisa Wheeler. This is the eighth book to feature dinosaurs and different types of sports. So you may have some of these in your collection already too. This one is set up like a swim meet with the carnivores versus the plant eaters. Various strokes are featured in the different races and readers will cheer for their favorite dinosaurs. Told in rhyming text, occasionally the dinosaurs' names are abbreviated to allow for cadence, but always after the full name has been used once. For example, Stego pouts, he didn't win. No time to sulk, it's time to swim. The dinos demonstrate some typical children's behavior, but it all ends with good sportsmanship. And the readers learn that another book is coming, Race Cars. Elephants Can't Jump by Gene Willis. Lion, monkey, and giraffe can jump, but elephant cannot. He asks his parents why, and they say it's just how we are. Then he tries several things to help him jump. A running start, a trampoline, but he still cannot do it. The other animals laugh as they repeat the title phrase. By the end of the book, Elephant has found something he can do that the others cannot. Finding your strengths, not giving up, trying something new are all featured. And um, what I, book 12 in this series, how do, this one is How Do Dinosaurs Stay Safe by Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. Dinosaurs like to do lots of things. They're very active. They ride bikes, go swimming, and stand on top of chairs. But mamas and papas want them to be safe. So there are ways to have fun safely. Some picture book nonfiction includes um, Full Speed Ahead. It's 64 pages, which sounds long for a picture book, but it um, is just two page spread with mostly pictures, uh, stylized pictures like these. Starting with the slowest speed, the book lists the speed on one side of the two page spread in both kilometers and miles per hour. The other side has drawings of two or more animals, vehicles, or people whose top speed is that which is listed. The bottom of the first page gives the name of each item or animal included on the second page. The back of the book contains one paragraph each in page order of information on each of the highlighted animals or items. It's great for browsers and this made me puzzle because According to this, the Earth rotates at the same speed as a bullet. So how does that work? I don't know. Hmm. Queen of the Diamond, a glimpse into the life of Lizzie Murphy. Born in 1894, she became, as it says on the cover, the first woman to play on both Major League All-Star teams. She demanded and received equal pay with the guys and poured her heart into the game. Um, and it's told in picture book format. I think this is a great inspiration for um, girls who want to be involved in sports as well. I am Jackie Robinson. This is from the Ordinary People Change the World series by Brad Meltzer. Short and simple biography told in first person, Jackie briefly explained segregation and the fact that only white players could play in the major leagues, and then what he and Branch Rickey did about it. This series now has several titles and is a good choice for the younger set. It includes a timeline and a few photos at the back of the book. Sportorama, it's translated from the French. This book highlights words associated with different sports. So each two page spread focuses on one sport and there are these stylized pictures like you see on the cover and the, then the one word like up in the, in the right corner, it would say football and the trophy, it would just say trophy. Um, it's just interesting to browse through it and you might encounter, the kids might encounter some sports they're not familiar with like cricket or horse riding. Beginning readers and early chapter books, well, we have to include Fly Guy. Hooray for Fly Guy. This one is so fun. If you no longer have it in your collection, you can still get a copy of it. This is number six. Buzz plays on the football team and he invites Fly Guy to join. Coach says Flies can't play football, but he's welcome to come to the game. Buzz and Fly Guy work on a secret play and a touchdown dance. It turns out that both will be needed. Kids will love the scenes of Fly Guy trying to tackle Buzz and trying to catch a pass. They will also love the conclusion. Pete the Cat's train trip, just as it sounds, Pete the Cat, his mother, and his brother Bob take a train trip to visit Grandma. Pete gets a tour of the train and meets some new friends. So traveling is being active. Splat the cat and the hot shot. Splat is impressed with the new cat scout Scott's competence and knowledge. 
trying to emulate him, Splat brings everything he can think of on their big hike. Hike, And it turns out several things Splat brought are very helpful. And Scott seems to be a nice guy who compliments Splat on his preparedness. Splat's mouse friend Seymour is included, and kids will love finding him in the illustrations. This is a fun story about trying your best, even though Splat had trouble with a few scout tasks and working together. And what I like most about this book is that Scott is a nice guy. I kept waiting for the shoe to drop and for him to be mean to Splat. He never was. He really admired Splat's preparedness, and we need some encouraging stories like that, too. It's fun that Flat Stanley is still being published because I think kids enjoy the character. And in this one, yay, Flat Stanley is happy. His feet work fine as ice skates, since no skates would fit him. He and his brother Arthur join plenty of their friends and townspeople on the pond. But as the day warms up, Coach Bart calls everyone off the ice for hot chocolate. Stanley is the only one to ignore him, and he is soon in trouble. Fortunately, Arthur has a couple of good ideas to save him. Digby O'Day in the Fast Lane. This is the first book in a new series. Now, this is a, a longer, you know, I had I Can Reads and then early chapter books. This is an early chapter book. Digby has an older but well-loved red car, and he especially enjoys driving through the countryside with his best friend, Percy. They encounter some trouble during the all-day race from Didsworth to Dodsworth and are sorry that Digby's annoying and inconsiderate neighbor, Luella, zooms into the lead right away. But maybe Luella will get her comeuppance. It emphasizes being a careful and considerate driver, willing to help others without being didactic. And the second book is Digby O'Day and the Great Diamond Mystery. Digby and his best friend Percy go on a little trip to the Hotel Splendide on the coast. There they save a man who has been blown into the water by a gusty wind and visit his home. At the hotel, Percy's dream girl, Peaches Meow, has checked in. But during the night, her diamond necklace and other guests' possessions are stolen. Can Percy and Digby solve the mystery? Fiction for grades about two to five. I put grade levels and, and age levels in there, but we all know that kids are different. And so some are younger, some are older, who would be interested in any of the books on the list. Case 13 learns that real bow hunting is very different from bow hunting in his video game. An old wolf, the pack leader, has ventured closer to people in order to find food for his pack. Case catches a glimpse of the wolf and then uses his new birthday present, a bow and arrow, to shoot a raven, feeling remorse when it falls from the sky. Later, the arrow is found and the raven is gone. A bit of magic realism is included in this tale, comparing hunting for food with hunting for points. Occasional illustrations enhance the text. Sophie, she prefers the nickname Sesame Seed, 11, roller skates her way around the city and the college in Cambridge, England, where her mom is the head of Christ's College and her father is a minister. She runs into the mystery of college student Jenna Jenkins, who others say left and went home. Sesame is not convinced and launches an investigation with her friends and another college student. Sesame is sure there is something afoot. And book two in the series, Gargoyles Gone AWOL. Sesame Seed, with the help of her friends, works to uncover the mysterious disappearance of gargoyles on Cambridge College buildings. She's still using her skates. A whole new ball game by Phil Bildner. <clears throat> this is the first title in a new series, Rip and Red. Rip, Mason Irving, and Red are best friends and starting in fifth grade. Red, Blake Daniels, is on the autism spectrum and uses some coping techniques to deal with stressful situations. When they find a new teacher in their classroom on the first day of fifth grade, Red is hard put to cope. Mr. Acevedo has a different approach to teaching, and he also coaches the fifth grade basketball team. Rip and Red and the entire class have some adjusting to do to follow Mr. Acevedo. Readers may like the idea that he refuses to teach to the upcoming test, promising that if they do their assignments, they will have no trouble on test day. His approach to basketball is equally refreshing. Plenty of heart and understanding in this book. And book two will be titled Rookie of the Year. Skateboard Party is the second book in the series, The Carver Chronicles. Book one is Dog Days, which I have not read. But in this one, Richard tends to let schoolwork wait while he is working on his skateboarding skills. He is eager to demonstrate his newly mastered move at his friend Greg's birthday party. If he can just duck his parents and his teacher for a little longer. Facts about Howler Monkeys was Richard's part of the team presentation, and he still hasn't written it. 
it's a bit didactic, but the lesson is learned. And I had just tell a quick story about my dad. He told me that when he was in third or fourth grade, the teacher would give them a paper to take home every day to turn in the next morning. He never did it at night, that night. So he had to stay after school every day, finish his paper, then take the new one home. He said it took him almost a year, a whole school year, to figure out that if he just did the paper and turn, he could turn it in the next day and he wouldn't stay after school. That's pretty much what this kid is. He thinks if I just get a little more time to practice this move, then I'll do my schoolwork. I just thought that was hilarious that my dad told me that. Kid Owner by Tim Green. Ryan Zinna, he's 12. He's in seventh grade. He's small, but he loves football and wants to be quarterback for his middle school team. He is shocked when his mother tells him his father, who he had never met, has died. It turns out Ryan is named in the will, becoming the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. Ryan is a bit too smug about this at school the next day, and a couple of the players on his team are not impressed. Then his father's widow challenges the will and suggests that her son will be the owner. I talked about this book at a school in Omaha and the particularly the sorry particularly the boys in class there were four of them that wanted that book right then and so I told the librarian and she ordered it right away so this is going to be popular cuz who didn't who wouldn't want to be the owner of the Dallas Cowboys Willie and Me by Dan Gutman is the 12th and final baseball card adventure um Joe Stoshak, Stosh to his friends, is asked to travel back in time to save pitcher Ralph Branca from throwing the pitch that let Bobby Thompson smack the shot heard around the world in 1951. But then Bobby asks him not to change, since he'd never have been inducted into the Hall of Fame without it. When Stosh goes back in time just to watch the game, he encounters Willie Mays and almost ends his career after one season. This is a fitting tale for the end of the series, and Stosh says he's learned that traveling through time can be dangerous, and maybe he shouldn't do it anymore. So kids who've been following this series will be sorry, but this is a good choice for your collection and for this coming summer. Oh, and Roller Girl. This is a full-color graphic novel. Astrid's mother has taken Astrid and her best friend, Nicole, lots of places, to a poetry reading, to the opera, the modern art gallery, but this time, the trip is everything Astrid could want, a roller derby event. Astrid loves it and becomes an immediate fan of roller derby, but her best friend does not. Then the summer before high school, she gets the chance to attend roller derby boot camp and finds out she has a lot to learn, but the girls she's with are, are pretty supportive. Um, Game Changer series. This is the third book in the series titled Heavy Hitters. Ben, 11, and his friends are ready for their little league season. Having played together on a football team and a basketball team, they know a lot about how each other thinks and plays. But now Justin is losing his temper. Something is off, and Ben will do whatever he can to help. Full of baseball action, sportsmanship is em emphasized but not as lectures. Playing as a team is natural to the characters, and enjoying the game is the bottom line. Izzy Barr Running Star is book four in the Franklin School Friends series. Izzy is a fast runner and can't wait for the third grade field day at school. She is hoping to come in first, but Skipper, the PE teacher's daughter, is her big competition. Her father spends part of his time at Izzy's events and part at her older half-brother's events. She wanted him to make it to the field day, but he wasn't there. Now Izzy will compete in the city's 10K race on Memorial Day, and she really needs her dad to be there for her. Breaking the ice. Hardworking Caitlin, 12, yells at the judges, completely out of character, after a poor score at a figure skating competition and is ousted from her skating club. No training, no practice there anymore. When the only place that will take her is the Fulton Club, called Fall Down Club by others, she knows she has hit bottom. The people are pretty nice there, except for Addison, who is all about herself. And she finds herself working on a completely new routine, hoping to score well enough at regionals to go on to nationals. Caitlin handles a lot and not always well, as she continues her dream with a new approach and new friends. Give some insight as to the amount of work, lessons, practice, more practice, homework. Her mother is schooling her, homeschooling her. All, that, all of, the, of what goes into a figure skating dream. More baseball. Um... Squeeze Play, this is book four in Cal Ripken Jr.'s All-Star Series. This title focuses on center fielder Corey Maduro. He's 12. 
his is he is in a hitting slump and Caitlin, the right fielder, keeps dogging him and insulting him. His biggest problem, though, is his dad. His father gets too excited, yelling at players, the coaches and the umpires. Corey has tried to talk to him about it, but that has gone nowhere. Good baseball action with a coach who expects players to try their best, follow the rules and even have fun. This fills a niche. As Hornbrook said of the series, this follows the Matt Christopher series formula. So if you have Matt Christopher titles popular, you'll uh, be glad to go for this series as well. Book five in the series is called Out at Home. Mickey, 12, must contend with the team's new hotshot, or at least he seems to think he is, Zach Zoom Winslow, learning to play together and tone down the ego. Jack, the true story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack's seven times great-grandfather was the famous Jack the Giant Killer, and this Jack wants to imitate him, except that nobody's seen giants in years and years. When two giants come down from the sky and take everything in the town, I mean the whole town, people, buildings, everything, Jack is soon up in their land to find his father and slay some giants because they took Jack's father and their cow too. Things are not as easy as he was planning. It's full of adventure. This twist on the fairy tale is logical and fun with a bit of a message about greed. Fans of Rump will grab it. And the book that's coming after this is titled Red. My Life as a Gamer. This is the fifth book in the series. Derek and his friends are invited to help test a new video game. It is fun, but it's hard to keep the details to themselves. They can't tell anyone else anything. It seems like a dream job, but there are drawbacks. This continues to include vocabulary drawings in the margins, and some of them are pretty hilarious. Oh, yes, Hamster Princess, a new series. This one is, first one is called Harriet the Invincible. Um, this is by the same uh, author who brought us Danny Dragon Breath, and you'll see quite a bit of similarity between the two series. When Harriet is 10, her parents tell her about the sleep, Sleeping Beauty type curse put on her by Rat Shade, the Wicked Fairy. Harriet is thrilled. She can do all kinds of things because the curse will keep her alive until her 12th birthday in order for it to come true. Off she goes to slay ogres, joust, and jump from cliffs. When, when she comes back just before her day, the day arrives and Harriet cleverly throws Rat Shade into the hamster wheel and the Wicked Fairy receives the curse. Sounds like everything's taken care of. No. Now Harriet must find a prince to kiss all 117 people and animals in the castle in order to wake everyone up again. And that includes Ratshade. Clever, funny, a couple of unexpected turns and fractions show up occasionally as Harriet is fond of them. Great fun. Book two of Mice and Magic just came out on March 15th. Arcady's goal. Arcady, 12, lives in an orphanage in Soviet Russia for children of the for children of people declared to be enemies of the state. Miss Hannigan is a pushover compared to the director and guards of this orphanage. It is in the late 1930s. Our Katie can earn an extra piece of bread if he defeats several other children one at a time with his soccer skills. He is unbeatable. But when he is adopted by a gentle man, he begins to call coach. He finds himself lost in a world he doesn't know. It's a look at another time and place. Some nonfiction for grades two to six or so, two to five. One of many titles in this series, you may already own some focusing on sports figures. This gives good basic information about his life and abilities. And having seen the, the movie recently, um, maybe a, a upcoming we'll be able to show the movie if it comes out in time. Game Changer by John McCoy. For the first time in secret, a white basketball team played against an African-American team on Sunday, March 12, 1944. The Duke University Medical School played the North Carolina College of Negroes team, whose coach was John McClendon. And it talks about the, the coming together secretly, playing the game, and then how they switched around the teams and played another game. And the winner is by Etta Keener. This is presented as an annual event, the World Animal Games. And there, there are four competitors in each category, and the book asks the reader to guess who will win. Each event's introductory page includes some basic facts on the competitors. Cartoon-like illustrations, groaner comments from the observing animals. The cow says, get a move on. 
add to the fun, but all the facts are true. Events include sprinting, the highest jumper, the long jump, and another. You could have the kids look up uh, information about the animals to, to verify that these facts are true, if they're interested in that. The Streak by Barb Rosenstock. The summer of 1948, May 15th, Joe DiMaggio hit a single, but the Yankees, his team, lost. From there, the book follows his hits. At 30 games, the papers began to call it a streak. It tells of Betsy Ann, his bat he cared for faithfully. The record at that time was 41 hits, and each pitcher he faced hoped to end his streak. Then Betsy Ann went missing. Joe had to bat without her. A wonderful tribute to Joe DiMaggio and his unforgettable summer. It includes an author's note, his stats, source notes, and a bibliography at the back of the book. Growing Up Pedro tells of Pedro Martinez growing up in the Dominican Republic, shadowing his older brother who taught him how to practice and how to play baseball. Pedro's appreciation and affection for his brother Ramon is clear, as is his love of the game. It includes an author note, a chart of his statistics, and bibliography at the back of the book. Now, Get in the Game is the teen theme. And the first book on our list in the fiction for younger teens is The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. <clears throat> this this blurb is written by Jill Annis, who did, read this book for our joint presentation at conference. Josh Bell, 12, and his twin brother Jordan were de destined to follow in the footsteps of their professional basketball playing father. The twins are inseparable until Jordan finds a girlfriend, which, which leaves Josh lost without him. After an altercation with his brother, Josh is benched from basketball and is forced to watch from the sidelines. During this time, he finds out his father is in bad health, but he refuses to go to the doctor. The brothers must learn to reconnect when their father lands in the hospital. This is a verse novel that portrays themes of teamwork, family, love, and loss. <clears throat> the Walk-On by John Feinstein is the first book in a series called The Triple Threat. A freshman at a new-to-him high school, Alex Myers tries out for the football team, hoping he'll get some time to play quarterback. He soon finds out that the coach's son is a quarterback, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Alex stays in the background until Matt is injured. Then Alex shows a bit of talent. However, when all the teams submit to drug testing, Alex comes back positive, though there is no way he hasn't used anything. What is going on? Book two, The Sixth Man, about basketball, is out now. Gold Medal Summer by Donna Freitas. Joey, 14, spends six hours a day of the summer in gymnastics practice. It is her world and she loves it, except for parts of the beam routine her tough coach insists she perform. Her goal is to do well, maybe even win gold, at the New England Regional Competition. It emphasizes her hard work and sacrifice and shows her grow as she reaches for improvement and success. And another book by the same author, Gold Medal Winter, about different characters. Esperanza Espy is 16. She is a well-grounded Latina figure skater going to the Olympics, hoping to bring back the gold. Unfortunately, there are jitters from just being there, as well as a nasty teammate trying to psych her out before the competitions. Now, on a different note, Grandmaster by D David Kloss. Daniel Pratzer, high school freshman, is new to the chess team and a low-ranking beginner. He is puzzled when the two senior co-captains invite him and his father, an accountant, to a father-son competition. Daniel is surprised to learn his father was a grandmaster 30 years ago, but gave up chess to retain his sanity. Together they go to the tournament, and Daniel sees and experiences what pressure, stress, and competitiveness can do to a person. Well-written, fast-paced, and tense, with demons from the past appearing once again. You may not think that chess can be fast-paced, but <laughs> it can. Catch Rider by Lynn H. I mean Jennifer H. Lynn. Sid, Sidney, almost 15, hopes to become a catch rider, someone who can ride any horse, for the show jumping circuit. Since she comes from a poor but knowledgeable family, she can't afford a horse of her own. Her love of horses and jumping, along with her skills and abilities, are what she can offer. Her uncle has taught her everything he knows, and that foundation will see her through whatever she must face to reach her goal. Field Trip by Gary Paulson is the sequel to Road Trip from 2013. Ben, now 14, plans to a professional hockey career, and the next step he wants is to attend a boarding school that specializes in hockey. Dad says no, he needs to experience many things before focusing on one. Next thing he knows, he and his dad, his dad's apprentice Brig, 
the family dogs, and twins Jacob and Charlotte are on the road to catch up to the school's field trip. But other things happen along the way, as you might expect. Beneath by Ro Ro Roland Smith, Pat O'Toole idolizes his older brother Coop, who loves to dig tunnels. Coop disappears for a year, but then mails Pat a digital voice recorder and memory sticks to play on it. Immediately, Pat is on his way to New York to find his brother. Instead, he finds a secret society living under New York, and they do not want to be found. Looks like a second book will be on the way. A Time to Dance Veda loves dance and is truly talented. Her grandmother supports her love of dance and desire to pursue it as her life's work, while her parents want her to study engineering. After winning a dance competition, Veda is in a bus accident and loses one leg below the knee. She is devastated, but then becomes determin determined to relearn dance. <clears throat> this includes Veda and her grandmother's love and respect for Shiva, along with her crush on the American doctor who believes in her while she works to dance. Oh, I love this book. Screaming at the Ump by Audrey Vernick. Sorry. Casey Snowden's father and grandfather run a sanctioned school for bas baseball umpires, and Casey, 12, and his best friend, Zeke, help each fall. This September, they only have 80 students instead of the usual 100, and Casey begins to worry about the future. He wants to be a sports writer, not run the camp, but he knows it is his father's calling. As the school gets underway, Casey realizes one instructor is not there teaching this year. He was usually in charge of the culminating event, You Suck Ump Day, where many people from the town gather to yell at the students to help them learn to deal with noise and irritated fans. So this year, Casey and Zeke organize the day. <coughs> Game 7 by Paul Volponi. Julio, 16, loves baseball and is probably the best shortstop on any team in Cuba. He wants to play for the junior version of the Nacionales, the Cuba international team, but his chances are not good. His famous father defected from Cuba six years ago and now pitches for the Miami Marlins, and they haven't heard from him since. Out of the blue for Julio is the plan for him to escape with his uncle, cousin, and another man who was hired by Julio Sr. to bring them to the U.S., they travel in a converted 1959 Buick, hoping to avoid storms and the Cuban Navy. The Marlins are playing in the World Series at this time, and Julio Jr. can't decide whether to cheer for his father or not as they listen to the game in the car on his transistor radio. And this book came out just in time because with um, our relationship with Cuba changing, uh, this story wouldn't have happened in another year. Nonfiction for Teens, How to Babysit a Leopard. Many experiences, some frightening, some humorous, are recalled in this look at Ted and Betsy's lives on the road in Africa, Mongolia, and more. Six continents. It's full of short stories of encounters along with wonderful art done by both of them. Fourth Down and in Inches. This book made my head hurt. The author starts with the history of football and how, in 1905 to 1906, there was a decision to change the rules to better protect players. She asserts, asserts that we might be at that place again. Basic information on the science of concussions and brain injuries shows the danger faced by all who play, as well as the people playing other sports like hockey. This side of the discussion is presented in a straightforward, informative way, and I have a book coming up that would go as a great pair to this book. No Summit Out of Sight, inspired by a mural of the seven summits at school, Jordan, at age nine, told his dad and his stepmom, Karen, that his new goal was to climb all of them. Fortunately for him, dad and Karen are extreme adventure racers and comp have competed in countries all over the world, running, bicycling, kayaking, and more. Taking it one mountain at a time with a lot of training and conditioning, the trio climbed Mount Kilimanjaro when Jordan was 10. He climbed Everest at 13 and completed his goal at age 15 when he climbed Vinson in Antarctica, a new world record. It includes a good sport attitude. Jordan realizes part of his success was hard work and part of it was good fortune, the weather being right, etc. At the end of the book, he states his new dream is talking to kids about finding their dream and going for it. And this book is also um, on the young adult golden sower list for 2016-2017. So another reason to get a copy. This is based on his adult book, Outcasts United, and as this book is written for teenage readers. A suburb of Atlanta, Georgia, refugees from different areas of the world are first placed here. 
Luma Mufla from Jordan attended college in the U.S. and decided to stay, and she becomes the coach of the soccer team, helping many young men from different countries to assimilate and form friendships. And this came out in 2012, I believe. And of course, with a sports and act, act, being active type thing, you need a book about Babe Zaharias, Babe Diedrichs and Zaharias. This one has plenty of photos from the time and colors on the pages to add to the appeal. And it shows how Babe Diedrichsen changed the world of women's sports, along with a few others at that time. Fiction for older teens. <clears throat> Adrenaline Crush. Dinah, she's 17. Her parents and older brother subscribe to the belief that pushing the limits is the way to live. One day, Dinah goes too far and falls into the shallow side of a nearby quarry. She has a compound break of one ankle and is lucky Jay was there to pull her out of the water. As she recovers, her mom takes her to the Ulysses Inner Outer Healing Center for both emotional and physical therapy. There she meets amputee Pierce, who encourages her to regain the thrill side of herself, while new boyfriend Jay and her mother are happy with her safety first side. A lot is packed into this shorter book as Dinah slowly begins to appreciate the touchy-feely therapy the center offers. A Matter of Heart Abby, 16, is so close to her goal to win the cha championship in swimming the 100-meter freestyle and qualify for the Olympics. She is one of the best swimmers on the team. Then, with state just a few weeks away, she faints after a competition and the doctor diagnoses her with hypotrophic cardiomyopathy, a silent killer of adolescent athletes. Unable to give up her dream, Abby hopes for a second opinion that's different and continues to train, though the pills she must take now slow her down to a crawl. Abby's identity is wrapped up in her swimming and she cannot let it go. It's a different view of sports identity and finding one's way to a new goal. This is um, from the TV series Push Girls on Sundance TV. Kara is a dancer. Now in her junior year in high school, she has loved dance since she was five. Then after a bad fight with her boyfriend at a party, she is hit by a drunk driver and her legs are paralyzed. Who is she now? The reader experiences her frustrations, loss of identity, and irritation at others who don't count her as completely whole. Well written, Kara's personality and honest reactions to her situation and others' treatment of her will keep teens reading. <clears throat> Here's a book I was talking about with the um, headache book <laughs> by Chris Lynch, Hit Count. This follows Arlo Brody's football exploits from his freshman through senior year of high school. A defensive player, he learns over time that he loves to hit and does not shrink from being hit, despite the growing pain, dizziness, and periodic confusion he feels. His mother keeps and shares a file of data on the damage concussions and the subconcussive impacts affect the brain. Even though he knows about the damage, Arlo continues to play as his brother did before him. It's a look at the appeal of football and the need to monitor the player's condition, told in a convincing fictional story. And I have one new title in a popular series that fits our, our theme, Big Nade in the Zone. In this book, oh, I don't remember which book it is in the series. The school is promoting healthy snacks and also has scheduled a field day. There's plenty of drawings in graphic novel, in graphic novel format in short intervals. And, of course, Big Nate is very popular. I think this book will fly off the shelves, too. And that's all I have except to tell you that um, the books I talk about are ones that we receive here at the Library Commission from publishers. So I don't see every book that's published. There are some publishers that don't send us everything, and even... The publishers who do send us things don't send us everything. So some of the books you can see were from the public library because I do look around and try to find as many as much a variety as I can. But if your favorite publisher or your favorite book wasn't covered, I apologize. These are the ones I ran across for this list. Um, I'm going to see get out of here now and go over to talk about next week's program, which is going to be whoops, where was I? Here we go. You can go to the Encompass Live on the Nebraska Library Commission website and look and see what's coming up. So next week, it's um, beyond the CMS. So I was reading this. I was going, I don't know what that is. So I cl can click right here and tell you that it's about um, new changes in web design and development in the last eight years. So I don't know what CMS and SOPAC 3 are. But if I listen next week, I'll learn some about it. 
you're welcome to attend next week at the same time. And on this web page, you can see our future to uh, topics that are coming up. And you can also, right here after that list, is the archived Encompass Live sessions. You can click on that and see any of the sessions we've done for the last, oh gosh, I don't even know how many years. And they're all in date order that they were presented. So um, if, you, if you know approximately what time of year it was presented, you can find it a little quicker or go through and look at the different um, titles. Thank you so much for attending today. I hope this was helpful to you. And I hope that you have a, a great list of books for your summer reading program. And we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>